See, what's interesting is the minute you become comfortable, if you are a natural complainer, I'll tell you, some of you are completely unaware that you are, men hate women who do these five things. Well, I guess five things, and we're gonna dive into this today. So really quickly, I just wanna be uh, transparent with you all. I saw it with you all. Uh, I saw this uh, title on Stefan Speaks YouTube channel, and while I did not watch it, so I have no idea if there's any comparisons between the two, I loved the title and I thought I would share my perspective on things that piss off men. And quite frankly, everything I'm about to share is true for men and women alike, okay? Now, let's just face it, in the early stages of dating, all it takes is one little thing to like, blow a second chance at a date or one little thing to blow a third chance at a date. You know, I mean, it seems like humans are rather sensitive. And I think this is partially true because we are meeting total strangers in the dating environment. We're meeting total strangers. And because that we don't have this strong sense of familiarity, strong sense. Everybody says to me, why isn't dating easier? Why is, why shouldn't it be simple? Shouldn't it be easy? It used to be simple for my parents' generation or the generation before them. Well, yeah, let's take a look. Let's go back and we'll, we'll get into our hot tub time machine and go back hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Folks, hundreds of years ago, most people made it within the tribe they lived in. Let me repeat that. They mated within the tribe they lived in. In other words, they shared the same values. They shared the same religion. They shared the same politics. And I don't mean just here in the United States. I mean throughout the world. You know, we shared the same cultural background. We shared similar interest in music and things like that because the world was much smaller to some degree back then. So it was no wonder it was much easier to mate compared to today. We have a lot of little nuances and things that can actually disrupt the connection of two people to join in and join in on a healthy, happy relationship. Now, I recognize it's very frustrating for many of you dating out there. I, particularly if you're a woman, you're rather frustrated because a significant percentage of men um, don't have to commit. I mean, the reality is, is these days, casual relationships, situationships, friends with benefits, not labeling things, taking it slow, <laughs> taking it slow. By the way, folks, when a man says, let's take it slow means I am happy to have sex with you, but I am going to stretch out for as long as possible any emotional or Com any emotional connection with you or any emotional commitment with you. That's what means taking it slow. So I recognize that many of you women are rather frustrated because the standard of relationship is so confusing today. What is the standard? There is no standard. It used to be hundreds of years ago, if you wanted to get laid, you had to get married. That was the standard. It was an easy thing to, to conceptualize. It was easy to conceptualize this. Today, do you know what the standard is? Our smartphones for a lot of men has really replaced prostitution. Oh, there I said it, a dirty word. But I mean, literally, men don't have to go to prostitutes. They can just swipe on dating apps, hook up with somebody, and within three dates, there's a good chance he'll have sex with someone. And he doesn't have to give any further commitment beyond that. Now, is this all men? Absolutely not but this represents a significant percentage of men. And so no, I'm, I'm only bringing this into the context of this conversation is to recognize that ladies, I understand why you've become so overly sensitive. And what may happen is you're doing these five things because you're trying to protect yourself from those men. Look at, I wish I could be there for you on a big, on a first date. I'm your big brother. I'd have the shotgun point at the guy's head and say, what's your intentions with my little sister? And the point of that illustration is that there's a consequence for bad behavior. There's a consequence for bad behavior. These days, there's no consequences for bad behavior. We can treat people emotionally we can treat people almost to the point of 
abuse, I don't mean abuse, but close to it, and there's no repercussion for it. And, 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 and I guess this is where personal responsibility plays a part in this as well. So much of my work is centered around, folks, if you're familiar with my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help and Spiritual Work. There's a link below to get a copy of my book. It starts by being in an empowered place for yourself so you don't make these early mistakes that trigger someone to go the other direction. And just remember, it is rather tenuous at best, the early stage of dating. We are feeling each other out because as I said in the beginning of this broadcast, we're meeting total strangers. By the way, for the record, I believe the first telephone call is the first date, okay? And I recommend spending up to an hour finding out as much about this person just to see if you have some base alignment some base alignment with this person because you might find out in that telephone call you don't need to get dressed up on a thursday friday saturday night to meet someone that is misaligned with you i know all the dating coaches say it's a numbers game just put yourself out there just put yourself out there go out on as many dates as you possibly can in fact we want you to date three men at the same time you guys have any idea how fucking exhausting that is and worse, how emotionally delib how 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 that can affect us from an emotional perspective. This 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 form of numbers, you know, this cold call way of dating is part of the problem why people are so sensitive. But we're going to get into it more granularly in a moment. We're going to get into the nitty gritty. Okay, what I'm about to share is true for men and it's true for women okay so this is like things people do that screw up the early stages of dating but particularly we're going to talk about how men dislike this and you can apply this to men as well first and foremost flaky behavior flaky behavior i can't begin to tell you in my own experiences how absolutely flaky women can be they can be flaky in their communication. They can be flaky at planning um, events like dates and whatnot like that. I will tell you that flaky behavior is one of the primary reasons why a lot of, for, okay, let's call the first date actually a first meeting, okay? So after the first meeting, do you wanna know why a lot of times you don't get a first date? You showed up late. You were in, you know, and, and, or you were flaky in your communication prior, or maybe he just wanted to check you out. But I will tell you, flaky behavior typically results in this. Okay. Now you might see, this is where I, I'm going to share something with you. The book, The Rules, fucked it up because the book, The Rules, has implied game playing techniques, but game playing to a high quality man appears as flaky behavior, waiting a long time to return a text, blowing someone off at the last minute so they, you can create tension and anxiety between the two. I'm gonna tell you something. For an emotionally mature man, this is what he says to that. He says, no. Now, granted, we have a dysfunctional population of human beings that will fall into the category of temporarily hooking somebody through flaky behavior, okay? But I will tell you, for the emotionally mature man, that's gonna backfire on you every single time. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know, hit that like button if it is, okay? Number two, complainers, complainers. I have to tell you, I've experienced this in my own dating experiences where I've gone out with women, and you've seen it with men too, so this isn't singular to women. People that complain about their family, they complain about friends, they complain about their job, they complain about children, they complain about the economy, they complain about politics, they even go as far as complaining about themselves. I can tell you it's the subtle complaining. It's the little, uh, it's like the subverse, subvert, what's the word I'm thinking of? 
the 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 undertone that comes out in communication. Now, usually this doesn't happen on a first, second, or third date. It usually begins to happen when there's a bit of rapport built with somebody. See, what's interesting is the minute you become comfortable, if you are a natural complainer, I'll tell you, some of you are completely unaware that you are a natural complainer. And I will tell you for that evolved, emotionally mature man, he's just, he doesn't want to deal with it. We, we men are, if I'm going to put myself in this category, is we're, we're seeking women who are in a state of gratitude. It's an attitude of gratitude. See, I understand why, you know, so to some of you complaining might be venting, okay? But quite frankly, if you're not seeking a solution to your problem, it's not venting. It's complaining. Venting is releasing it with the intent to solve the problem. When you're venting it merely to... Um, to get it off your chest without any resolution to it, it comes across as complaining. And I will tell you, I've witnessed this. So this isn't like, and by the way, ladies, you've gone out with men too. You've been with guys. You've, they, they've complained about their family. They've complained about their friends. They've cl complained about the economy. They, by the way, complaining about politics is not healthy conversation to complain about it. Certainly there is a lot to be concerned about in the world, but to complain about it serves no purpose, okay? Number three, now this does directly relate to men and women. And number three is we are not mind readers. Ladies, we are not mind readers, particularly if we ask you, what would, where would you like to go tonight? What kind of food do you like? We don't ask that well, Jonathan, that just tells me he's not confident because I am just supposed to sit my feminine energy and let a man lead. That's what men are supposed to do. I'm only attracted to that confident man who knows what he wants. Folks, sometimes we ask you what you want because we actually want to please you. We actually want to please you. If you said you wanted sushi, great. I'll go, on, I'll go on Yelp, check out the sushi places and schedule a place, or I'll go on Open Table. But sometimes we ask what you want because it's our way of saying, we want to make you happy. So then when you, you know, dismiss it, reject it, or avoid it, then we're trying to read your mind after that. It's a big turnoff to us. You know, if you want to go do something, then just say it. It makes, it brings us joy when you are decisive, when you actually volunteer assisting. But Jonathan, that takes away from his masculine. That's me being in the masculine if I do that. Oh my God, this stupid conversation about women being in their masculine is the most, okay, I'm gonna say it. It's the idiotic thing. This whole narrative about women, you know, now look, let me just be clear because I'm going off on a, a, a squirrel here. A woman who's controlling, a woman who is domineering, a woman who is dismissive, a woman who is criticis criticizing, defensive, or even stonewalling, that's not masculine behavior. That's just bad fucking behavior because if a masculine man did all those same things, you would call that bad behavior. So, you know, we have to differentiate. When you hear a lot of that from some of my, I don't even want to call them contemporaries. I'm talking about some of the noise you hear out there. Good human behavior is not masculine or feminine. It's just good personhood. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. So we can't read your minds. If we ask you something, it's because we genuinely want your input. So share your input. Okay. Number four, talking negatively about an ex relationship or an ex spouse, talking negatively about an ex relationship or ex spouse. Ladies, I don't care if he was 97% at fault. If you throw him under the bus and take no ownership with your 3%, it is a turnoff to the emotionally mature guy because the emotionally mature guy takes 100% responsibility for his failure in a relationship. 
And if you don't take 100% responsibility of your part of the relationship, if you literally point the finger at the at, at the at the ex-spouse, the ex-relationship, it is all there. They were a narcissist. They were abusive. They were, and I, I get that's what your experience might be. But I'm here to say, hey, listen, 90%, 80% of guys won't have a problem with it because they are mature, emotionally mature enough to recognize that you have issues. But then again, if he accepts you, he has issues, okay? <laughs> You know, we are swimming in a sea of dysfunctionality, you know, so it's no wonder we see so many transactional relationships, transactional relationships. See, I said earlier, I talked about situationships, casual relationships, friends with benefits. The fact of the matter is in today's world, we're in a lot, we, 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 uh, experience, many people experience transactional relationships. They're not soul-based relationships. See, transactional relationships follow a traditional paradigm. Men are the leaders of the relationship and women must submit to men. This is the whole red pill narrative. This is the religious right narrative. It, it, it takes away women's empowerment. But more importantly, it takes away the concept of co creating a relationship with another human being, co-creating a relationship. Do you know what co-creating looks like? It looks like this. It's not this, okay? It's this. Don't you want to co-create a relationship with another person? You know, there's a business book. This isn't a relationship book. It's a business book. It's called the Partnership Charter, How to Start Outright with Your New Business Partnership. I want you to think about this for a second. When two attorneys come together, they could be man and woman, they could be two men, two women, two attorneys come together, two sovereign beings. Each one of them might have a strength. One might be a good rainmaker, the other person might be a good admin person. They come together as partners. They have partnership meetings. But Jonathan, I am supposed to just sit in my feminine energy and let the guy do everything. I'm supposed to do nothing. Like, where did that become, like, where, where is that logical? You know, I mean, I mean, well, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, take that back, rewind. To me, I'm here to encourage a more spiritual, heart-centered way of approaching this from your individual empowerment and not the traditional narratives that we've been sold on. If you haven't read this book, I highly recommend the book, If the Buddha Dated, If the Buddha Dated. Oh my God, chapter nine talks about the emotional equality necessary for a healthy, happy relationship. It throws out the gender rhetoric and it says, how can we connect with another human being here? Because isn't this really what it's all about? How to connect with someone's heart? Look, I get it, ladies. A lot of men have concrete surrounding their heart. But believe it or not, women have the capacity to, to jackhammer their way through that concrete when you apply some of the principles I share in my videos and coaching program. And by the way, if you need support, check out the link below to a free discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. And the fifth, and to me, this is one of the most, this is the biggest turnoff I've observed in the dating marketplace is women who make no effort or worse, they are non-appreciative they are not appreciative. There is this narrative. There is this what I call princess energy narrative. I think they're, the princess energy is seeking their father. And so they have this expectation, this entitled expectation that men are supposed to do everything from paying for dates to planning to doing everything in the relationship. It's very princess energy. It's not queen energy. And they make little or no effort. You know, I'm, I'm going to steal a line from Matthew Hussey. We'll talk about first date. He says, who should pay? He was talking about who should pay for a date. And he said, if a man was raised right, he should pay for the date. And if a woman was raised right, she would offer. See, it's not so much the money. It's the effort that matters most to men. And more importantly, 
actually appreciating our efforts. Ladies, how frustrated are you when you're with a man who doesn't appreciate your efforts? And I got to tell you something, there is an entitled group of women out there that just expect to be treated. And by the way, the more attractive the woman, the more entitled I've observed, the more attractive, this is just a generalization, this is my judgment. But the more attractive the woman, I find the more entitled she is. She is less appreciative and makes little or no effort. And that's a big, that's, you know, guys who are emotionally mature, Look at we, you know, men who are financially successful, they have no problem. It's not about paying for dates. It's what we're looking for is what effort you make into the relationship other than just showing up dressed nice. But Jonathan, I spent all this time getting dressed up. Well, the guy spent time getting dressed up too, okay? I know it takes longer for you to put makeup on. I get it. But that's not what we're talking about. It's the effort that matters most. And more importantly, more importantly, the appreciation of the effort. And again, um, this is just my interpretation on everything, okay? So is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Post a comment below, just to reiterate. Uh, and by the way, if you like this content, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And just to reiterate every the five things, flaky behavior, complainers, expecting us to read your minds, talking negatively about an ex relationship or spouse, and lastly, not making effort or worse, not being appreciative of our efforts.